Hello YouTube! Driven to Compete here. I'm with my cousin Doug. Say hi Doug. And hey, we're working on his Shelby today. And it's on the lift. And uh, let me tell you, let me just back up here a second. This beautiful yellow beast. We're on the lift because we're going to pull the front wheels, pull the front wheel liners, and we're going to do corrective action. Um, somebody, Doug bought this used, and somebody painted the stripes on. And when they put the uh, when they put the bumper back on, right here at the top, if you follow the body line where the bumper meets the fender, you'll see at the very top at the headlight there it is sticking out. So we're gonna go ahead and yeah, here Doug's gonna point that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the uh, inner liner out. We're gonna do a little video on that. And uh, if you haven't already tried this, uh, hopefully this will help you out in the future. Okay, so we got the front wheel off and as you can see the braking package is slightly different from the performance pack cars um, Like my 15 and because the front end has ducts for brake cooling they have uh, Vents here in the front and they have vents here in the back and That is functional to let air come back out through on the fenders. So yeah, Doug's gonna shine a light back there. Yeah, you can see the light so you can kind of tell that it all works Those are big Brembo's and I know you can't appreciate how long they are, but there's my shop light. Okay So it gives you an idea <laughs> these things are massive and then um, And then of course there's the struts and uh, the whole setup there for his uh, impressive Magna ride, which is fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the inner liner out. Again, um, you, you take taking these out right here and we're gonna pop all these out the whole way around. And we're gonna pull this out so that we can gain access. Again, so you can kind of see from right there, you can kind of see how it is not quite where it should be. So, Stay tuned and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so we've removed all the little clips. You can see they're missing here, okay? So on a GT350 though, you have quite a few when you go to remove them, just to give you an idea, right? Right there, there's a lot. But um, you also have one that's up underneath here and I'm gonna crawl underneath to give you a better understanding of where we're at. You gotta make sure you hit that one right there as well, okay? So. Or your liners won't come out. Now, to get your liner to come out, Doug, you want to yep, take your liner out. Listen, it's really not that difficult at all. I'm going to pull it down. Pull these out. And it's got a lip up top here. Just pull it in. Oh, uh, did you miss? You missed one, Doug. What? I suck you missed because one. I'm not awesome like you. Hey, I missed one, Sean. Right there. Yeah. You have you have nice hands. Oh, yeah, but you got the soft lips. I know, family. but you have nice hands. Okay. So. Whoops. We'll take that out then. Oh boy. Okay. You have a GT. Um, this material is a lot firmer and uh, I think they do that because you have the there again You have the vents coming in and out So, you know, you have to manipulate this a little bit more to get it to come out of the wheel well but when you do Doug, Let's show them what the inside looks like there It you looks go. it looks naked Sean <laughs> Here we go. It looks like a race car. You got your ducts here, right? And that's just held in place literally just presses in and then uh, is held in with two two of those. So we'll put that back and I'll show you how you get that back in later. I'm gonna pull it out actually for now. We'll set it aside. So we should be able to access here are the clips to the front, front bumper. So what we need to do is we need to see why this isn't in like it should be. Okay, so we've opened it up. You did have to remove these two 
so that we can pull the fender on uh, the end of the fender off because what they did was I don't know if you can make it out in there I'm gonna try to show you there's okay right there there's a groove that you have to put the fender will fit inside so picture the bumper has like a u-shape and then the fender is supposed to feed into that just like that right so my fingers are the fen are the front bumper, and they're supposed to go around that piece right here on the fender, and they're not. They're on the outside. So they're like this, right, and it's pushing it out. So we're going to take this apart. I'll give you a better idea of what we're talking about. Okay, so we pulled these two bolts out that were right here, okay? But there's also one right above, and it's a 7 millimeter. and I'm trying to give you some light here so you can see it better. You're going to need to get, I have a quarter inch set with a deep well with a um you know swivel on it and we're trying our best here doug's gonna show you though it will move um here i'll hold the light and uh once you get that out we can do corrective action here on this on these ends of the bumper and get them back to where they should be it's tight folks i'm not gonna kid you the easy thing would have been to put a gear wrench on it, but I don't have a seven millimeter. My, my gear wrench does only go down to eight, but we're getting it. So just take your time and be patient, right, Doug? Yeah, it is an exercise. In okay. Oh, you, I know. I'm not gonna say a bad word. We might have kids watching. And if you're a kid and you have a GT350, I don't like you. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. You gotta do it. Whoever designed a swivel needs to be rich. I'm sure they are. By now. I can't. <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna, gonna get this bolt out oh, for you, yeah. and then we'll show you the next step. Okay, so once we got that bolt out, we did it, we pulled on this a little bit. This went right into place where it was supposed to be. And as you can see, we're gonna put it back together, but that looks a lot better than, let me walk around to the front here. So here's where finished looks, right? Here's where it was at before we started. You can kind of see how it sticks out. Now listen, it's not that big a deal, but we know it's not right, and we want it to be right. You can you can kind of see how it's sticking out. Now, it's definitely not doing that at all. It's perfectly smooth, like it's supposed to be. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble and um, show you, hopefully, the other side. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we fixed this side as well, and that looks a lot better. You can't see the structural um, ness, uh, like the, uh, the the portion of the clip on the back side there. You can't see any of that. Gone ahead, we put the liner back in, and you know, for you guys, these ducks just are loose, and we thought they they snapped in place in front here. Let me uh, walk around here, you know. They're right there, and we thought maybe they pressed and they were held because there's uh, there's something right here on um, the side there you can see. But they're really just in, held in place uh, by the two pieces here on the front of the liner. So as long as you pull this through and you have these connected firmly, that duct's not going anywhere. So you don't have to stress at all. You probably shine through there, Sean. Yeah, uh, we'll shine the light through so you can kind of see. You know, um, it, it, that's, that's all that holds it in place. And uh, so we've gone ahead, we've not put these three in on each side because um, these come factory with these guys on from the factory. Okay, it's almost like a little rock guard. So Doug has gone ahead and he has bought some for the front. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put those on while we have the car apart before we put the wheels back on. So. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll show you some steps to do on those. So here's what we have from California Pony Parts. Um, you can see here for 2015, 2017 uh, splash shields, and they're pretty basic. 
you know, uh, Doug's showing you here. They're pretty pretty basic. They come with some hardware and they come with some 3M uh, tape, double-sided tape. And uh, we're going to reuse some of the hardware. And the, at the end, go ahead and hold that up. We'll show them from back here what that looks like. You know, again, it's something minor. It's going to just give him a little bit of protection. You can see, and, and it also is going to fill in here. So he's not throwing debris back. You know, he was collecting stones and all kinds of stuff in there. So that's going to help clean it up a little bit. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and we'll start putting it together. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we cleaned this with um, some good glass cleaner. Dried it. And then we went ahead and we put some double-sided tape on it. And, and we're going to show you why here. Doug's going to show you. Because uh, there's nothing really to hold this piece uh, at the top. So they used the tape to hold it in place. So we're going to put a fixture through on the bottom. And you're going to see here, we come up, and if we were accurate enough, yes. So we didn't screw this up too poorly. You can see how far up we came. And it's going to hold this in place, basically. And, um, I mean, it's pretty simple installation, honestly. I think... You probably could get away without even having to pull the, the tires off of this. You could probably just turn the wheels. So, you know, but it was just convenient for us to do it all at one time. So we're going to go ahead. We'll pull the double-sided sticky tape off. Go ahead, Doug. Oh, okay. And, you know, we, we purposely kept the tape um, off the edge slightly just because we didn't want you to be able to see it. Doug's uh, struggling to get that on on camera. Everything's hard to do, isn't it? Yeah, right. Do you need a uh, screwdriver? Here. <laughs> there you go. I'll edit this. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. It's just going to be difficult. Are you serious? Out of everything we've ever came today, the double-sided sticky tape is going to be the piece that kicks our butt. Wait, got it. Okay. Hey, success score. All right, so I'll let you go ahead and line it up where you want it. There we go. There you and if you look here, you want to keep this flat piece lined up with the inside of the yep. fender. Yeah, I see that. Looks good. So, you know, probably a little pressure. That 3M tape is serious stuff. Don't put your hand to it. You'll be stuck to your car. Okay, so let's look at from the side back here again. That looks great. It looks factory. And that's what we were trying, that Doug was trying to do here. And you can see back here, there's just barely enough there to keep it from throwing stuff back on the body. And that was the idea here as well. Um, I like it. Very subtle. If you ever see the new Corvette, they're the same way. Yeah. They have a little bit from the factory. Okay, so with that said, we're going to go ahead. We're going to put the wheel back on this. And um, well, <laughs> I probably don't have to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over uh, Torque. torquing your, your Torx backs and using Torx sticks. So we'll, we'll hit that here in a minute. Okay, so we've gone ahead. We've started these. The important part is get the first one in there and get it snugged up pretty well so that you're on the the hub square that's the big part because let me tell you if you don't get that on the hub square it creates all kinds of issues it gives you a vibration it gives you difficulty trying to get the wheel apart if you want to show them you can go to the other yeah. video and show it to them with that yeah with we'll that show one. you the center so you, today's cars are you have this right here and what this is is your wheel goes right over top of it and i'll show you the back side it fits in there and it's it's in there pretty snug okay and so what you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure you don't go on there crooked or something of that nature because then you'll have trouble getting the wheel back off it'll give you vibration all kinds of issues so with that said doug's gone ahead and he snugged these all up they look great and we have our impact uh, socket there and for the Shelby's actually we found that the uh, standard 1316 works better 
than the metric uh, equivalent. There's less play in it. It's nice and tight. So we need to tighten these up. How are we going to do that? Well, you've, I've been at shops where they just take an air gun to them and they're done, right? Well, you can never tighten them that way. You don't know how many. They're not evenly tightened. You know, so, you know, back in the day, you used to have to get a torque wrench on each one and do the star pattern and torque them down. Not today. Today's technology, these, this has been around a while, but they finally, you know, they're affordable. So right here, this is what they call a torque stick. This is 100 foot-pounds. So this torque stick is made that when it gets to 100 foot-pounds, it will not let, it, it gives in the shaft. So it won't go past 100 foot-pounds. And I bought the set. Uh, I think they were 65 bucks at Harbor Freight. Let me scoop by you here, Doug. I'll show everybody the setup. So here's what you get. And they go from 150 the whole way down to 65. And you can see the shafts get thinner because uh, they need to be able to give or twist so that they won't go past a certain uh, torque setting. So we're using 100. Uh, rule of thumb is generally anywhere from 90 to 110 on most stuff my trucks uh my big diesel i use 120s on obviously if you had a big commercial vehicle 150s would probably be the, the game so we're gonna go ahead and doug i'll hand you the camera i'll show everybody how easy these are i've used these in other videos as well you just put on your gun it won't go any further go to the next one star pattern idea is, is that you're applying uh, pressure evenly across the hub. And there you have it. And you can go back over the first to the first one. Make sure you have it tight if you want. Um, they're not moving, so that tells me everything's good to go. And there you have it. Okay, driven to compete here, and there you have it. We went ahead and we made some repairs to the front end on Cuz's GT350 Shelby. As you can see, the finished results, they look great. And we put the, what they call those actually? Mud flaps, stone guards? I don't know, because they're so mild, but it just looks great together. It looks factory. So there you have it. Hey, as I always tell you, if you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button along with the bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos. And as always, watch, like, subscribe. Have a great day.